Good morning, Wrestlers Adventurers. We're here in Owasso, Michigan with the Locomotive 1225, or the North Pole Express. This locomotive was the inspiration for Chris Van Allsburg's book, The Polar Express, and later it was used as the model for the movie. So we're gonna step on board and take a ride. That's why we're dressed up in 40s apparel and go to Ashley, Michigan for their annual Old Fashioned Country Christmas. My name's Chuck. I'm Poppin. Channel's Restless Viking. Let's go on an adventure. So, uh, how's Poppin's look, guys? I, I know I look stunning, but Poppin <laughs> looks pretty good, too, doesn't she? So we are waiting to board, but a little history on the locomotive. It originally was a C&O 2659. It was built in 1941, and uh, immediately after, for the next four years, as one of the volunteers says, its boilers never cooled down as it hauled wartime material around the Midwest. This Berkshire N1 locomotive was retired in 1951. Between 1954 and 1957, most of the N1s were scrapped. But in 1955, an MSU trustee, Forrest Ackers, was asked by CNO Railroad CEO Cyrus Eaton if Michigan State University wanted a locomotive. They accepted the gift in 1957. The locomotive was put on static display near MSU's stadium. Good morning. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Oh, wonderful. How are you doing? For the next decade, the locomotive was displayed, and before every home game, a young boy used to stop by to visit the imposing marvel. That boy was Chris Van Allsburg, who later used his memory of his visits to pen the book, The Polar Express. They have all the hot chocolate ready back there. In 1969, a group of MSU students formed the Michigan Railroad Club and began taking care of 1225. In 1971, that group of students began the monumental task of returning the engine to operational condition. Then one evening in 1975, the students lit a fire and over the next few hours brought the boiler up to temperature. Finally, in the wee hours of the night, they pulled the line and for the first time in 20 years, 1225's whistle blew and apparently the campus police were called to investigate. Poppins and I had the honor of meeting a couple of those original club members, including Steve, who sat with us for an hour to recount those days. We also met the unassuming Arnie. Both of these men have been a part of this remarkable history for over 50 years. We had known then what we were getting into, but he would have started this thing. <laughs> Last one's off the train, so we're kind of fashionable. Good, how are you? Wait, so you see us? Do you want to go get your picture taken with Santa? I know how you like to get your picture taken with Santa. We're at uh, Ashley, Michigan, and we're going to go check out the community center, and uh, we're going to get our character done. You excited? Yes. Because we're funny like that. Oh my gosh, we are characters. In 1884, the village of Ashley was founded and became an important station on the Ann Arbor Railroad. It's the kind of town where hardware and convenience stores share the same building. It may be small with around 550 residents, but this little town throws a mighty celebration. Straight out of a, <laughs> a gangster movie. We had a two hour stopover in Ashley, and honestly it seemed too short. There was too much to do. We did manage to find time to get a couple of those iconic pictures taken in front of the locomotive. It's like a scene out of a movie. The behemoth slowly breathes itself forward. If you're not careful, you might feel the hair on the back of your neck start to tingle. We have to 
wait for the long single whistle to know that the brakes are set. It's still rolling. Then we can get out. Oh. oh, they put on a pretty good gig here, don't they, Poppins? Yes, they do. Old 1225 pushed us back to Owasso. Normally it's the newer diesel that pulls everything back, but it was having trouble. It looks like after 60 years, the old steam technology had her back. Make that old steam one, diesel electric, zero. Well, they had a little technical difficulty with the train, but we are back in Owasso. And I, we would say goodbye, but our good friend Patrick, the Spectacle Reef Light, has invited us possibly to come back and see the engine room. So I think Patrick might be a little busy, but we'll uh, wave at him. If you're going to be busy, we can just get out of here. But... Oh, no, we got time. All right. See you guys. From humble beginnings, the volunteers have tackled a monumental task with a can-do spirit. 1225 was built during World War II when a can-do attitude gave us an edge in a battle of good versus evil. It seems to be the story of America. Most of the passengers have no idea how hard this whole project has been. It was not lost on us. As Patrick showed us around, you couldn't help but see the amazing work. 1225 was part of the story of this country. But if you ask me, she still is. Right there. Black smoke is <laughs> Side got redone completely. So when you go outside, you'll see if you notice the ceiling changes too. And it isn't just the old steam locomotive. The Steam Railroading Institute has more locomotives, passenger cars, freight cars, maintenance cars, tanker cars, gondolas, and cabooses. But Patrick symbolizes the organization's most valuable asset an army of volunteers that are more like a huge family. It's enough to make anyone's Christmas a little brighter.